Welcome to the 359. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Alfred Ng. Samsung Unpacked is tomorrow, and it seems like we've got a handle on some of the big stories coming out. There's a lot of products to unpack here. Ha ha. Uh, various <laughs> leaks point out to uh, at least a mainline Galaxy S10 phone, a Galaxy S10 Plus, uh, this rumored budget phone or the Galaxy S10e we're hearing, uh, and potentially a 5G model. And we'll probably hear more about the, the foldable phone, which this morning Evan Blass uh, put on Twitter, saying it'll it'll likely be called the Galaxy Fold. Very creative. It's unfortunate that the foldable phone is not the main event here. I really wish this was an event for that. I, I'm sure a lot of people are more buzzed about the foldable phone than they are about the S10 itself, considering all the leaks that have happened Yeah, I think, with it. I think you make a great point. It's a little weird that, uh, you know, the foldable phone will likely be jammed into the S10 event mm -hmm. because Samsung will obviously want you to focus on the S10 and the phone that you can buy now. Um, but I imagine a lot of folks will be more captivated by the foldable device. Yeah, I mean, everyone's talking about foldable phones this year. This is like the big piece of uh, gadget innovation that everyone's been looking yep. for. Yep. Um, and to see it being tucked away in this kind of event is kind of um, you know, discouraging for me. But at the same time, I mean, we'll we'll see how they present it. Maybe mm -hmm. it'll be their, you know, one more thing. Maybe it'll be, maybe it will get the the kind of spotlight that it deserves. Mm -hmm. But you're right; it's a little weird. They're jamming everything in. We've got uh, rumors of wireless earbuds as well. Um, there was a leak about their smartwatches mm -hmm. from from Friday. I mean, it's they've got a really big show yeah. coming up. Is Dex still a thing? Dex is, Dex is a thing. Okay. I mean, we we don't know if they'll talk about it tomorrow, mm -hmm. but the last several presentations they've. Dex has made an appearance. Yeah, I'm curious because I haven't seen any leaks for, for Dex or anything like that, but I am always surprised when they bring it back. It's like, hey, check out this thing that we're really, really into that no one uses. But you know what, yeah. though? Scott Stein, big fan of Dex. He I, loves using it. I mean, I wish like more people use it. It seems cool, but you know, for, for that to be somewhere like popular, I don't I don't really see people using it or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely more of a of like a workplace yeah. type. Uh, mm -hmm. feature so it's it's not it's not quite as sexy mm -hmm. as a foldable device are there any rumored prices on this budget phone yet like is it how is it like the iphone 10r where the budget price is 750 like seven. <laughs> uh no i mean there are a bunch of prices floating out uh, but it's I, I i imagine it's somewhat in line if not a little bit, uh, a little bit less than the the 10r um samsung kind of likes to keep parity with mm -hmm. apple's pricing scheme so I don't know. We'll see. And this 5G model, is this like 5G, 5G, or is this like, it's 5G LTE? 5G? Site, kind of, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, you know, Qualcomm and Samsung uh, back in December made a big deal of having one of, if not the first 5G phones. Um, I, I think Samsung's going to do this right. This is going to be a 5G device. We've had, you know, I talked with Verizon CEO who, you know, who claims he's got the first Samsung 5G phone. This is likely it. Um, so if you just sort of parse the wording, chances are this is a phone that will have will be exclusively uh, a Verizon phone for a couple of weeks, months. We don't know, and then it'll it'll go to the other carriers. Mm -hmm. And you've talked about five G's capabilities a lot. You know, people using it to do like surgery with VR yep. or something like that. I mean, is this phone really going to unlock those capabilities, or is this one of those things where it's like everything is just faster for no reason? Oh no, no. I mean, surgeons will be able to you know, <laughs> perform their operations with the phone. Actually, yeah. it's going to be a little clunky at first, but the five G will really make it. No. Uh, this is a taste of 5G. Presumably, if you're in the market to take advantage of those 5G speeds, your connection is going to be blazingly fast. But in terms of all those big revolutions, the big stuff with 5G, that's going to come down the line. Yeah, a taste of 5G sounds like the worst restaurant week um, ever, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to seeing it tomorrow. Yeah, for a full coverage on Samsung tomorrow, check us out CNET. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Alfred Ng. Thanks for listening. It's got four stars on Yelp. It's okay. Taste of 5G. That I'm with Alfred on this one. Taste of 5G is a terrible idea, but then I've always hated 5G, so that's just <laughs> well, no, so you For order, undetermined reasons. You order the food, and then it comes out like a year or two later. So you just got to sit there for a while. <laughs> and then you get like some appetizer that's not really yeah, 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 what yeah, yeah. you ordered. Uh, we are getting in some, some deep concepts here, but hey, everybody out there still watching and listening for whatever reason is wrong with you. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Uh, go ahead and send in questions and comments so we can keep the conversation going. Uh, a little bit of trivia today before we move on to the rest of the show, where we take your questions. Uh, today is Nicholas Copernicus's birthday. 
So yeah. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. And uh, as a reminder, there will be no show tomorrow since we're going to be live covering Samsung's Unpacked. So we'll see you again on Thursday for regular 359 coverage. So anyways, you guys can take the day off tomorrow. I mean, come make sure to watch the Samsung show. Uh, but in the interim, let's go ahead and take some questions and comments um, from Maskilla469. Great name. Uh, get rid of the Bixby button, please. Yeah, we don't think that's probably going to happen, right? Yeah, I I imagine the Bixby button is is here to stay. I mean, they really, really want you to use Bixby. Same reason they want you to use Dex. I mean, Samsung just wants people to use like their content even though no one's using it. All the time. All the time. Like, TouchWiz is still a thing. I don't know if TouchWiz is called. It's still a thing on their devices, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I guess they call it TouchWiz. I mean, it's not TouchWiz is not as bad as it used to be. To sure, be sure. It used to be terrible. I just wish you were able to get rid of it, at least. At least give me that option. Nah, nah. All right, here's a great question from our old friend Michael Brown. Do you think Samsung has been the most innovative company over Google and Apple at scale? Ooh, that's a good question. At scale, uh, I mean, yeah, you can make the argument for it. I don't mm. think that's a fair question, though, b only because, like, Samsung, I, I mean, are you talking about just phones, or are you talking about, if you're saying at scale, that would include, like, everything, right? Mm -hmm. So that would include, like, I think, TVs. And I was thinking when he meant at scale, like, volume phones, like, selling oh. hundreds of millions of phones as opposed to, like, selling, oh. you know, like, a niche player, like an Oppo, or, or, or like, a OnePlus, yeah. right? Um, I mean, yeah, you can, like, I guess, really, there's only a couple players like that, right? If you've got Huawei, Apple, Samsung, Maybe LG. I don't know. I mean, if we're talking about just phones, I still think Google has been doing a really great job the last like few years yep. since coming out with the Pixel. I mean, like they like historically have not made devices, and then they come out with this focus on software instead of hardware. Right, and like their right. cameras are already like some of the better cameras out there without like needing. That's, yeah, that's true. The camera tech is hard to beat for Google. I would say Samsung has an edge at least in hardware. Mm -hmm. The devices look great. I mean, the the curved screens now this foldable thing. Like, if they're able to actually execute upon it, I mean, you could you can kind of give them uh, a lot of props for their their ability to innovate. Yeah, beyond... but I wouldn't say that that's Samsung doing that though. I mean, isn't that like what's that random Chinese company that like came out as like, we're the first ones oh, to have uh, it. Flex like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're the most innovative. Well, here's the thing. It's so I tried it and it, it does work. It's but awful. It, isn't it? It's not great. <laughs> yeah. And so that's the thing. We're, we're, we're still not sure uh, how the Samsung foldable phone mm -hmm. is going to actually yeah. work. Um, but then there was uh Shara and Jessica Dolcourt scoop over the weekend with TCL. With TCL. Yeah, they're and the not, watch. But, but they're not working on I mean those those products aren't going to be coming out to at least next year. Mm -hmm. So they're yes, the the scoop from Shara was a was a nice piece that kind of showed that everyone's doing foldable yeah. phones, but Samsung's the first to actually get it to market in a bigger way. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, there's the the Flex Pi phone. Yes. <laughs> but that's actually also not quite available yet you can order it it's on sale technically didn't people. xiaomi try something at last year's ces with that other foldable phone or it was no. like dual screened or something uh yeah they well they tried uh, the pop out just yeah with, yeah and then zte has that weird dual screen yeah. phone um so yes you're right there are a couple others that they're trying this stuff at uh i don't know if it's at scale mm -hmm. but they're definitely trying different things but uh in terms of like innovating and making like a polished product i think samsung yeah you can make an argument That's that fair. they've done a pretty good job with that uh, we have some questions and comments regarding the design and overall aesthetic of the new phones. Ironhide said that phone suck and ugly. Uh, well <laughs> uh, Zach Boxer, though, has a really good point. He says that the pill-shaped notch on the new Note is hideous. At least put it in the middle instead of on the right. I don't mind the shape of it, but symmetry. Come on, Samsung. I imagine that's for logistic purposes. The, you should have the S10 or the Note. Because I think it's the, the rumor... He said the Note. The cutout, oh, okay. Well, the, I mean, the cutout that's rumored for the S10 is the one that's sort of kind of floating there on the right or something. So oh. It's not a notch. It's just like kind of a circle. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. what a pill. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's what they mean. But I yeah. think the idea is like instead of having it on the right, like they want it like dead in the middle. Right in the middle, yeah. Um, I don't know. Like I'm like looking at my phone right now with the, with the little like notch there, yep. and I'm imagining if it was in the middle, I would kind of hate that look, even if it was symmetric. Yeah. Also, I feel like, eh, maybe it's better that way. Like, if it's in like the middle. Because the then it wouldn't block, like, your time or anything like that. Or, right, like, your right. notifications. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. We'll see. We'll have to see how they, they actually implement that. Like, if the status bar is above the cutout. Mm -hmm. I think, I think the issue. general logic of companies, though, is we don't care if you hate it. 
you you get used to it kind of thing where yeah i mean that's definitely been apple's yeah right yeah everyone hated the notch and now everyone's you know copying it so yep yep although i admit few companies are able to kind of do that right apple Mm -hmm. was able to shift the industry when samsung went to curved displays uh, or like the curved edge displays Mm -hmm. no one else decided to fall right yeah uh, but I still look at that curved edge display and I just think, you know, what is this Why? like extra space for? Nothing. It just looks cool. Yeah. Iconic. <laughs> Joseph asks, do you think that the Galaxy S10 will be more expensive in terms of retail price? And will the retail price of the S10 be retail uh, retailing more than the original S9 price? Oh, good question. I'm, good. I'm not entirely sure. Um but the fact that there is a budget, like a rumored budget model, suggests that the prices are probably prices for like the mainline phones are probably going to be a little bit higher. Um, I imagine like the plus will be higher. If they could be around the same level, they were pretty expensive last year. The plus is a top tier, right? Yeah, the plus is top tier. Well, That's there's a beefcake. There's also the rumored five G phone, which would probably be more expensive. I am so mad at this industry trend of every phone getting more and more expensive. And people just go out and buy it and it doesn't stop them because like people are paying for it. You know, they're just going to keep raising the prices. Stop buying really expensive phones and ruining it for us cheap quads. (laughs) That budget phone is not going to be cheap. I'm like willing to bet on that. Cheap is, yeah. It's going to be somewhere like the $700 range, I'm sure. Yeah, which is cheap anymore though. Yeah. I hate everything. There you go. All right, more questions. Hang on, I'm digging them up right now. Uh, Mohit Banzal says, what is expected from Samsung's new rumored OS? Oh, um, they showed off the OS during their developer conference. I mean, it just seems like it's a little bit more streamlined, so hopefully not TouchWiz-esque. But um, yeah, well, we haven't really had a chance to get like a... I haven't had a chance to get it hands-on, so I can't really... All Bixby all the time, baby. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Every button is a Bixby button now. (laughs) The entire screen is just a giant Bixby <laughs> button. Every time you touch it, Bixby's like, hello, how can I help you? Uh, Hunter Lee asks, will there be any other design compromises with the budget version? Oh, um, it's, uh, I mean, you'll have to look up the rumor roundup. Uh, in, in terms of, I think it's, uh, I would imagine things like camera, um, memory, the, you know, there are certain configurations that are available to you in the higher end specs. The easy uh, places to kind of cut the corners on it, but as far as design and look go, they're pretty uniform. Yeah, I would imagine aesthetically it's going to look very similar. Uh, here's a really fun one. One Night Tonight asks how much to repair that folding screen. I'm interested in this too, just because the one thing I noticed in some of the demo videos of the concept and all that that we, we've got floating around, uh, when they fold it, if somebody touches the screen, it still messes with the UI. There's no disconnect there so you could accidentally tap something activate something yeah and that's one of the things i hate most about edge-to-edge screen phones is i have nowhere to safely put my fingers you know like to handle the thing um what happens if you start like activating crap accidentally lock the phone yo what if they sell phone cases to like block out that area (laughs) so you can put your hands there you get like a little finger tab thing you have to put on that nullifies your finger so it can't feel it, so it's like a dead space. Oh, God, that would be so awful. But well, yeah, that's a great Samsung accessory right there. Oh, God. <laughs> 1999. I, uh, no, I look, I, I would say the uh, in terms of like the repairability of these things, I think that's going to be a real issue, a real question. Most of the, the, the handset makers I've talked to still haven't really gotten a handle on the wear and tear. Samsung says they've got. Um, you know, special proprietary technology that allows their device to fold and bend thousands of times without that kind of wear and tear issue. But it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a challenge. The particular because at least the concept they showed off, the screen folds inward mm-hmm. uh, like a clamshell. And from everything I've heard, that because the radius of that is tighter than say the screen being on the outside, that is, um, there's a lot more wear and tear possibilities. So. I mean, we're we're not gonna know for a while whether or not these things will break down, but um, it's definitely uh, something I, that's that's a question for me that uh, still kind of lingers for these. That products. and I'm pretty sure the replacement material for a lot of like repair shops, yeah, like that is not gonna no be something exists. easy to get your yeah. hands on, um, especially like that type of glass that they've been experimenting with. Uh, I mean, right now, like if you try to get your phone, at least for me, my phone screen repair was like eighty bucks, right? And that's like a static screen, right? Um, you know, for that kind of material, I, I imagine it definitely be more than that i mean it's, it's probably one of those things where you have to send it back to them right yeah it's not you just can't go to a repair store and get that thing fixed right mm-hmm. away 
Uh, let's take a leak for a second. Uh, do you think that the leaks have ruined the excitement of new products? That's from Kenneth. Timothy uh, branches off, says, why are we still surprised by the leaks before the phone's announcements nowadays? You know it's their marketing department that's leaking it just to drive up the hype. Uh, I, I, I don't necessarily know. Some of it is. Some of it, I think, is incompetence. Um, you know, it, and, and some of it is just, you know, um, journalists and bloggers, like, doing their jobs and, and uncovering stuff that they, you know, that Samsung didn't really want them to uncover. Um, yes, I would say that does suck out some surprise. Uh, I would imagine, given just how jam-packed this show is is shaping up to be, there's going to be a lot to it. And I think even if you've seen the products, uh, you know, the, the screen caps, even if you've seen the leaks, um, getting the full story, getting the context behind some of these products is just as important. I, I disagree with the getting rid of the excitement uh, part of it, like leaks-wise. I feel like more devices mm -hmm. should go through with this kind of strategy that like video game companies do a lot uh, where it's like you know short updates every few months like what nintendo did with like super smash brothers right where i think that like by provi providing more information as it gets closer to the release date like you actually build up excitement that way as opposed to you know everything just coming on like one day all right well yeah it's a fair point and these leaks have actually helped me build up excitement for the s10 okay. because it's like oh cool they have like this feature and this feature and this feature, which I haven't seen before. Okay. So All right. there you go. Slowly uh, trickle more. If nothing else, <laughs> it, it definitely helps Samsung stay in the news cycle, yeah. right? Like if there was nothing else, you know, we'd have there'd be preview storage or whatever. But um, the fact that these leaks have come out in a fairly consistent flow, I'm sure some of it is is marketing controlled, but uh, and some of it is again incompetence. Uh, but it, either way, it sort of helps Samsung stay in the news cycle. Uh, here's a question coming in from Brian. That's me. You say that the show's going to be jam packed. Do we have any idea what the rough runtime is going to be? Considering I'm going to have to camp here and push buttons for like four hours. Oh, uh, I don't know. These things usually go about an hour. I'm guessing this one will be like 90 minutes or so. Okay, that's a fair assumption. Yeah. Uh, back onto leaks. Mark Dibble asks: Have any leaks resulted in legal action? Uh, none that I'm aware of. Um, look, Has anyone tried? Let like alone yeah, not just Samsung, you like in general. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I know there were leaks. Um, what was it? Uh, the Take Two. Didn't they? Didn't they sue? They sued some. This was a video game leak, though. Oh. But, um, I forget which UK publication like released information on. Was it Grand Theft Auto? No, uh, Red Red Dead. That would Redemption? be Rockstar. Rockstar. Yes. Sorry, not Take Two. Um, although it doesn't. Doesn't take two own rocks. Uh, that could be. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> anyway, I, did, I mean, I, I know that happened in the video game world just last year, which is kind of a bad precedent. Generally, um, I would say it, it's pretty rare unless it's something really egregious. But I, I think for the for the consumer electronic company trying to you know, trying to sue a news outlet, it's just it's bad. It's just going to blow up in their face, especially if it's true information. If it's yeah, true, right. I mean, they. I mean. The the Rockstar case, I mean, it was it was true, right? They got yeah. proprietary information ahead of time. It's just in general, it's it sets a bad precedent in terms of freedom of speech, um, and it's really just bad PR for a company to go after uh, a news outlet for reporting the news. So regardless of the circumstances behind it, so we don't see a lot of that. Uh, coming in from Mouse Sefer, do you think they will go with a 4K resolution display? Ooh, um. My guess is no, but... Then he asks, why not? Well, 4K really works well if you've got a big display. If you've got like a, a tiny one, the the benefits are pretty minimal for the cost you're putting in to, to have a 4K display. I know Sony does this uh, with some of their phones, but you know they, they really push 4K across a whole library of products, so it, it kind of makes sense, but I don't know why I would need it, though. To watch the 359 in 4K on your mobile device. All right. I really actually would prefer they watch it in low res <laughs> than over 4K because... You can see all of these pimples right here. We don't do here. anything here. There's no makeup. This is all natural. For better or worse. So This is the real low 359. <laughs> low res, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, we got just enough time for a couple more questions. Uh, Michael Brown. Hey, Roger. What would it take for you to switch to a Samsung phone? Oh, God. You're, you're asking... Don't... Don't... Uh take a lot um of, like of money I, I did actually have that's the thing i had a samsung phone i had a s6 edge and, and it wasn't the greatest experience so i've kind of uh, opted away from using samsung phones 
they're fine. Hardware wise, they're great. Uh, software wise, I think I prefer prefer a cleaner Android experience, like something you'd find on a Pixel or even a OnePlus. Um, you know, I, I I like the hardware. Just sometimes the the software. Are you only using iPhones now? No, I've got a one like plus and a okay. pixel. Yeah, I was wondering what yeah. your devices I got, were. I got, I got a lot of phones. Wait, yeah. are you seriously running three at the same time? Like not right now, but yeah, usually. Jesus. Uh, all right. Uh, let's take a couple more. Uh, if you were to pinpoint the reason behind smartphone prices rising, who would you say is truly at fault here? Apple. <laughs> <laughs> now he's got it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely Apple. Apple came out and Samsung said, well, if you're opening the door to that, we're just going to yeah. take advantage of it. Yeah, I mean, like, it. think about before the, the 10 was announced, there were all these articles on the rumored price of, you know, Apple's yep. going to sell a $1,000 phone and then all these analysts like, no one's going to buy that. Who's going to pay that? And then their earnings came in. It was like, oh, everyone is buying yeah. that. Yeah. And then, you know, that's when it really, like, started skyrocketing. I mean, there, look, there is also something we said about the more sophisticated equipment being thrown into these devices. You know, Samsung is rumored to have this ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, um, obviously, with Apple, there's the, the Face ID, all the, the infrared camera. That technology, at least initially, was expensive, but uh, maybe have just justifi- justified some of that price point. But now it's at this point, Apple's opened that door and everyone's just taking advantage. Uh, when we see the S10 come out, how much do we think the uh, Note 9 is going to drop? Oh, um, they don't drop by that much. Like they're old models. Yeah, I mean, I imagine they'll they'll be deals. Yeah, eventually. it's like a hundred or like fifty dollars. Yeah, off. but I think it's especially for the Note Nine uh, for the Note line. Like you kind of have to wait for that Note cycle. Yeah. and before you get the discount there. Like I'd imagine the GS Nine will get a decent uh, discount uh, in the coming months. But uh, the Note Nine just came out of the summer and or the fall, and you know it's it's still several months before we get a new Note. Okay, we're closing in on the end here uh, from Mohit. Is this the right time to upgrade to a new phone, seeing that there are so many new design upgrades, especially in the last year when you went to from the notch or to the notch from the slider? Uh, what if I invest now and it immediately becomes outdated? I feel like that's the question of the decade right now with the way everything has gone. I think if you think like that, then you're never going to update your yeah. phone just because, um, yeah, there's always going to be some new thing that comes out within the next like four or five months. I mean, especially if you're uh, an Android fan, there's just a new better phone out seemingly every other month. So, um, you know, after Mobile World Congress is sort of a good time because at least you get a sense of what some of the, the flagship devices are. But uh, keep in mind, uh, you know, Huawei's launching their phone after Mobile World Congress. Um, you know, OnePlus usually has their event a little bit later in the, the year. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, like I said, at some point you just sort of have to make a decision on a phone you want to buy. Um, and and was, you just have to be aware that, like, a newer, better phone is going to come right around the corner. I also feel like it depends on, like, when the last time you up- upgraded was. Yeah. Like, if the last time you upgraded your phone was, like, four months ago yeah this is not a good time don't do that why <laughs> why um i haven't upgraded my phone since the s7 so like i'm you know pretty much in position to like get a new phone now right. um so yeah it, it really is all about timing and what you're looking for i implore you to adopt my philosophy which is to wait until the device you have starts belching fire and then throw a dart at whatever is currently out on the market and then wait till the next time it belches fire you literally did that yeah <laughs> like that's not a joke no he, he's, he's, I'm not exaggerating in the least. Okay, uh, we got time for just one more. Uh, Mohit asks, is buying 5G actually useful? And let's go ahead and take that from the perspective of a consumer. Um, I had like five, five Gs, please. <laughs> <laughs> I would say at least this year it's going to be mild. Your mileage may vary. Uh, it really d- depends on whether or not you're in one of those initial 5G markets. Uh, because the rollout's going to be kind of slow, uh, and it's going to be selective. And even if your market has 5G, your particular neighborhood may not have it. So uh, it, look, 5G is great to have for early adopters, the folks who want to be on the cutting edge. But uh, just keep in mind that like, it's yeah, going it, to be buggy. It's going to be buggy. It's going to be spotty. It'll be like when 4G kind of rolled out initially. Like it's, it's not everywhere. Um, there are issues with, I suspect there will be issues with size, with battery, with, um, keeping a connection to 5g. Uh, and so it's, it, the, the early, um, experience may not be as smooth as you, you know, you've had with 4g LT. Early adopting is always a roll of the dice, but without you early adopters, the rest of us don't get to reap the benefits. So thank you for that. Or uh, just read our reviews on it. Or that. 
there you go. That's and, probably a better answer, frankly. And in read CNET reviews. And in closing thoughts, uh, this is a bit off topic, but I thought this was a nice one to go off, go out on. Michael Brown asked, uh, what does Roger and Alfred enjoy most about doing the 359 show? Whoa. Well, obviously taking Getting questions meta. from you guys. Yeah, that's my favorite part, too, in all, yeah. in all seriousness. Well, I don't know. What's your favorite part, Alfred? I like uh, going back after the show and just, like, doing, like, mashups uh, and, like, cuts of me and uh, saying, like, ridiculous things. Um, you have a lot of fodder. This show is all about me, basically. Um, <laughs> so I'm looking forward to seeing, like, fan versions of it sometimes where it makes me say things that I've definitely never said. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's a challenge. Get out there. There's plenty of Alfred clips to work with. Definitely. But as we mentioned before, no show tomorrow, but make sure to stay tuned to CNET for the Samsung Unpacked live coverage. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you back here for the 359 on Thursday, Roger. The 359 is available on iTunes, TuneIn, FeedBurner, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Google Podcast, the Amazon Echo, of course, CNET.com. We'll see you all on Thursday. Take care, folks. Looking forward to talking to you about whatever they unveil tomorrow. Mm-hmm.